Dear Flora of Geometric, you are welcome to this edition of our program. In this tutorial, I want to show you how to set your Atlantis 5 rendering parameters. Look at this fork here, it is called Edit Rendering Parameters. I want to show you how to set this uh, rendering parameters here. Then, another thing I will show you in this tutorial is how to set your head, you're done. And then, how to edit the shaders on your wall. So as to obtain a bright uh, physical look of your model looking like this. Can you see this model now? It's very bright. The white paint on this surface is neat, clear, not dark. Now if you look at the sky, you can see how bright the sky is. This is Atlantis 5. Now I want to show you how to set your Atlantis 5 so that it will produce a bright model that looks like this and as well as editing of the, the shaders. Follow me. I'm going to exit this particular right now and open a fresh one. Let's exit it. Now, I want to open a fresh drawing and show you how to set your rendering parameters, your head, your joints in Atlantis, and then obtain a building that looks bright and neat like I have just shown you now. Let me go to my Atlantis 5. My Atlantis 5 has just opened. These are drawings that I have done in this Atlantis 5. I am going to open a fresh project. I will import a fresh project from this port here, yeah, open down to import file, click up, and uh, start for all files. I want to open a fresh project. Now I am going into this particular folder. This is the folder, the drawing I want to open. It is done with SketchUp. So I'm going to import it. Open. Import. It's a side question. It's important. Beautiful. It has just imported this new design. Now, I want to open the previous drawing that I just closed now. I want to show you something. I want to show you something in that uh, design. Let's minimize. Let's minimize this drawing board. Let me go into this board and start for that project. I think I have it here. Look at that project here. Let me also open it. It's a side question as the drawing opens. Okay, the drawing is opening. Beautiful. The drawing has just opened. Now look at the project we are going to work on now. And this is the one we have. Now the reason for opening the two drawings is I want to I want to show you how to set your drawing in such a way that after setting this uh, drawing board and these rendering parameters, it will look neat as this one. Now there is something I want you to understand about this drawing. The facade, that is the front part of this building, looks very bright. It is clean clear and neat. Now, the reason is because of the setting I gave it. Now, very many users of Atlantis think that the only way to obtain a bright physical outlook of a model like this is by concentrating the sun towards this direction. Let's, let's go to our 2D. And then, let me on my Heliodon. Now, if you look at this Heliodon setting, you observe that the sun is positioned behind this building. That is, the sun is at the back. At the back of this building. Yes, the front part that is seen from the sunlight is still bright. Now, very many users of Atlantis think that the only way to obtain this front part looking bright is by concentrating, turning this sun to focus in the front of this building. Now, I want to tell you that that is a common idea of rendering. You can still achieve a front uh, facade that is bright and neat without concentrating the sun on it. Now, let me let me imagine. Let's go to this new drawing we want to work on. Now, take a look at this right now. We have just opened it. Now, if we click on the 2D view, let's click on the 2D view. I want to show you something there. Now, let me on my head. Do you observe something? The sun is concentrated in the front of this view. That is why this front part of the view looks very bright. Of course, you know it is sun. Now, the question is, how can you achieve a bright uh, outlook, bright facade, without having to concentrate the sun in front of that area? Assume a situation where you have the sun concentrated behind, that is, the sun is located behind this view. How do you make this front part of this view to look bright? That is what I want to show you in setting. This, all these things depends on your rendering parameter setting and your headlong setting. So, there are three things we are going to learn in this program. One, setting your rendering parameters and uh, your headlong setting of your headlong and the editing of your shaders. Then we go into rendering so that you see what happens. Now, we just open this place. Move away from the uh, headlong, click on your perspective. Now, whenever you open your Atlantis, this is what it will tend to look like in the first place. Now, the first thing you do 
Remember, we've not done any setting on this project. Whilst we just opened it and we are just comparing the two uh, projects. Now, the first thing you do is change this figure here. This figure. It is called focal length value. Change the focal length value. I always make use of 37. Figure of 37. Once you type 37, click enter. You need to push the view. You need to zoom the view out so that you can see almost the entire part of the view. Now, having done that, the next thing you do is you see this part. It is called architect's camera. On it. Once you on the architect camera, it will straighten, it will straighten the viewing to stand vertically upright. Now let me off it again so that you see how this viewing will look like if it's standing slanted. Watch out. You see, the viewing appears to be slanted. Watch this particular area. It looks slanted. Look at this pillar here. It looks slanted. But once I on the architect camera, it will stand vertically upright. Now, that is the first stage. We've just done that. Then the next stage, you click on your ground, click on your ground. By on it. The moment you on it, you click on this ground page and change this figure to zero. Type your enter. Beautiful. Click OK. That is the second step that has been done. The third step now is you click at this rendering parameter. Click on it. The moment it opens, go to your rendering size. Change this value to choose full HD. I always advise users of Atlantis to go for full HD. Click on it. We've we'll just used the full HD. The resolution. Go with 100. Type in 100. Click enter. Then anti-aliasing. I will tell you what anti-aliasing is all about. What does anti-aliasing represent in Atlantis? Anti-aliasing has to do with the degree of straightness of the edges of your uh, project wall. Take a look at this wall. You see this edge, this sharp edge down, down. If you don't on this anti-aliasing, if you don't on it, when you finish rendering your building, these edges will appear wobbling. They will appear wobbling. They will appear zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. Because this anti-aliasing is not it. Now, whenever you check this anti-aliasing, there are two options you choose. Because this is not There are two options there. Either you go for low value and high value. What does this low value stand? Low value gives you low straightness of the edges of this wall. Why high value gives you more pronounced uh, straight edges. So, go for high value. Go for high value. This anti-aliasing has nothing to do with your rendering time. So you go for high value. Then the next thing has to do with radiosity. This setting. We have normal radiosity here. We have medium radiosity. We have high radiosity. What does radiosity, uh, radiosity stand for? Radiosity has to do with the degree of rebounds of indirect light on surfaces. Assuming you have this particular surface here. You have this surface here. Now when indirect light strikes this surface and rebounds off and hit the next surface, adjacent to it, the outlook it will produce, that is what radiosity has to do with. So, when you are working on radiosity, we have normal radiosity, we have new radiosity, we have high radiosity. Now, the interrelation, interrelationship between the light, indirect light, rebouncing off this particular surface and the light rebouncing off this particular surface, the way they interact and give you the physical outlook of these two adjacent places is what radiosity does. Now, if you choose normal radiosity, now, the value of outlook between this surface here and this surface here will be good. Of course, we know we have um, good, better, and best. Now, normal radiosity will give you good outlook. Medium radiosity will give you better outlook. High radiosity will give you best outlook. Now, this high radiosity also affects your rendering time. If you go for normal radiosity, you will have good outlook, and your rendering machine will render this uh, uh, model in shorter time. If you go for medium radiosity, you will have better outlook and your rendering machine will take a little bit more time than it consumes in normal radiosity to render this model. Now, if you go for higher radiosity, you will have best outlook and your rendering machine will take more time. It will consume more time to render this model. Beautiful. I always go for higher radiosity. Now, if you choose higher radiosity, your system will take more time to render this model. But there are things that make the system to consume more time in rendering. There are the radiosity count of the triangles of libraries that you install in this model. Assuming you have trees, you plant trees, you plant hedges, you bring human beings, you bring different kinds of objects in this model. The radiosity counts of the triangles of those objects affects the rendering time. Now, to make this high radiosity that you're choosing here, not to consume too much time, you will have to on you have to, all those objects that you're going to drop here, you are going to set them to lower radiosity count so that they don't consume more time in rendering. By this way, you minimize the rendering time of your model. Then the machine will not consume more time in rendering this model. So having set this to higher radiosity, that's good. The next thing you do here is type this to your 100. Then this uh, shorter, this is your ISO. 
Point red, your shot has changed into 250. Beautiful. Then, your custom lighting. This is your custom lighting. This is your custom lighting. You have attenuation. You have a color bleeding. Move this attenuation to 1. Then, shape type 0 0.3. Here, yeah, 0 0.3. And click enter. Beautiful. This is what your object, your, your model turns into. Click on save as default. Click OK. That's the setting you've given to this your rendering parameter. Beautiful. Now, this view is still look bright. Why? Because your head, your light, the sunlight is concentrated towards it. Now, we are going to move this sunlight away from this front and see what this uh, uh, facade of this building will look like. Now, with this, I am moving the sun away. Beautiful. I have moved the sun away to the back of this unit. Now, do you see the effect it produces? Here is now looking at that. Now, the question is, how do I achieve this place looking bright even with the sun concentrated at the back? Let's go. First, let me complete the setting of this, uh, the setting, the camera setting of this unit. Click on your perspective. Do you see? Click on your 2D view. Your 2D view has just appeared. I want to move my focus. This blue dot means the focal point, focal point, the focus of your camera. Move it to the center of this unit. Then, this red dot means your camera position. Then, we are going to move this camera closer to this spot. We are bringing it closer to this spot. Now, let me click on this uh, front view. So, as to bring the height of the camera down. Bring the height of the camera down to this spot. Then, the focal point, I have to move it up to add me see the top of this building. Then, I'll move back to the plan view. i move this... Uh, Come a little bit back so as to see this building. Oh, now I'm beautiful. I can see part of the top of this building and I also can see the ground. Now, with this, I want to show you how to brighten this area with the sun concentrated at the back. Remember, we've done the setting of our rendering parameter. You can see the setting that we get it here. Then, the next stage is Hey Jordan. Click on your Hey Jordan. Let me show you how to set your Hey Jordan. Now, whenever you come to this spot, we have three settings for this Hey Jordan. You have this place, position of sun according to town, location. I always use this, um, I always use this uh, setting here. Then we have this one, manual setting of the sun. I always go for this particular one. Then it is already checked on. I will just change this figure. This particular figure, 11, means moon. This one stands for D. So here we are setting, I'm using the moon of June. That is 6. Of course, you know we have three moons in a year. So I like making use of six moons. I'll type in my city, click my enter. Then this is 12.30 noon. 12.30 noon. Now, when it is 12.30 noon, the sun is directly overhead, 90 degrees, in such a way that the shadow of a building is concentrated around the waist of such a building. If you take a look here, you will see that shadow is not showing here. Why? Because the sun is directly overhead this building. Now, you can set the sun directly overhead the building by using this time of 12 noon. Remember, when it is 12 noon, the cloud cannot be blue like this. When the cloud is blue like this, it is morning. Take a look at your sky. Can you see your sky is bluish? Now, when the sky is bluish, you can't make use of 12.30 noon. Whereas your, uh, your, your cloud or your sky is bluish. It means it's a wrong setting. It's a wrong setting. Once the time is noon here, the sky has to be bright, almost like white. Showing that the sun has risen to its full glory in the horizon, thereby brightening the entire sky. So you, it is wrong to have a, a bluish sky when the sun is high up there on the horizon. But now, to complement this blue sky, I will have to go for any morning, any morning rendering setting. Choose this figure here, type in 9 o'clock in the morning. That is one, 9 o'clock in the morning can agree with this blue cloud. So type 9 there, click enter. Beautiful. Do you see what your building has just written? The building writing, not because you have done the correct setting. No. The building writing because the phone rotated away and focused somehow close to the front of the building. Let's go to our 2D view. Let me show you something. This is the position of the sun now. The sun has appeared somehow in front of this building. But I will still move this sun back because there is an emphasis I am trying to uh, lay here. Watch out. I move the sun backward here. Why do I move the sun backward? Because I want to show you how to make this front facade bright. Even with the sun concentrated at the back. Because it's not a must. This idea of any time you want to render your model, you will bring, you will turn the sun to concentrate in front of the building. It's totally wrong. What of a situation where the sun is behind you? 
how does how do you achieve a right outlook of your facade? That is what I want you to learn. You don't, learn, you don't have to concentrate the sun in front of your building again in order to achieve a right outlook. So let's move the sun back. Let's move the sun back. Beautiful. Now remember, the only thing we've just said here is the moon, which is June, and the time six o'clock in uh, uh, nine uh, a.m. in the morning. Now can we choose a a location here? Can we choose a location? Okay, let's choose a location from this place. You can choose any location you feel like. Any location you feel like. I like going for Los Angeles. Let me just check. Let me just pick Los Angeles. And let me go down again and see if my, okay, my son is still concentrated behind. Good. Having choose Los Angeles as my location, the next thing we do here is, you see your sky here. Type a figure of 50. Increase the value to 50 and type enter. This is what happens. Your building has just brightened. Your building has just brightened. Now, if you look at it, it should seem that the, the sky is too bright in this color. Okay, let's type 25. This is what it looks like. I think it looks bright enough to, it depicts what the viewing looks like when the sun is turned away from it. Of course, it is no longer dark, it is bright away. Now, having done that, on your shadow, we have just found our shadow, can you see? Can you see the shadow of this building that just appeared? Why this area that is bright shows the sunlight striking those area. Now, having done that, don't increase this value. Don't increase the value of the shadow. When you increase the value of the shadow, you have a dull shadow. But when you leave the value of the shadow as zero, you have a more pronounced, a more sharp. This, uh, this shadow is sharp. But when you increase the value, it will no longer be sharp, it will be dull. Take a look at this one. You see what else appear? Take a look at this, the leap of this shadow, the leap of this shadow. You see it? It looks dull. Now, let's bring it back to zero. What happened? This is the leap of the shadow. This is it. It is not bright. It's sharp. It's sharp. That is how you notice what happens to the shadow when you increase. Let's increase it again. Take a look at the leap of the shadow. It looks dull. So let's move it back to zero. It looks very sharp. Good. So always leave it at this value. Depending on how you want it. Whether dull or sharp. The one you prefer. You go for. Now having done that. Do you see this pollution? What does this pollution stand? Pollution means the degree Amount of clarity of your model. That is what pollution is all about. The degree amount. How clear does your building appear? Like this facade. How clear do you want it? If I move this figure down to zero, it looks more dull. It looks like a dark shade is enveloping your model. You understand? Now, if I move it completely to zero, do you see what just happened? Your building has just brightened well. So you see that pollution has to do with the degree of brightness of your building. A lower value will cast a dark shade on your object, on your model. Why a higher value will increase the brightness of your model? You can leave it as this value of 100 or you can leave it, you can type in 75. Let's look at what 75 value looks like. This is what 75 value looks like. Remember, our sun is concentrated behind this building. Whereas this particular front part that is hidden away from the sun is looking bright. It's all about setting. Now, let's continue. Let's continue. Now, when you look at the sky, you observe that the sky we have is artificial. We've not achieved a real cloud. So, on, check this position on. Check it on to bring out your cloud. Then move into this your clouds and do this minus set here. Increase this value to 100. Move this status. Remember, this is status. Move it to 100. This is your status. Move it to 0. This is your silo cumulus. Move it to 0. Now, this is your cumulus. This cumulus, I will advise you to move it. Watch what happens when you move the value of cumulus to 100. You see, your, your, the facade of this building, a dark shadow has been cast on your building, making it looking darker. Now, when we move this cumulus downward, your building will brighten. Brighten. It's brighten. It's brighten. Now, let's leave the value at 30. This is your building. Have just brightened well. Now, take note of this. Cumulus cloud. Higher value of cumulus cloud. Cast a dark shade on your model. The same thing applies to this stratus. If I move this stratus upward, stratus will cast a dark shade on your model. Make it look dark. That is why I always encourage you to move it down to zero. So as to have a brighter model output. That is all. Now, we have this cloud mask sun. What does this cloud mask sun mean? You know, one of the things that affects the degree of insulation or the degree of amount of sunlight reaching the air surface is the cloud. When there is high cloud cover in the atmosphere, in the sky, the amount of sunlight reaching the air reduces. But when there is less amount of cloud in the atmosphere, 
there will be a higher amount of the sunlight reaching the air surface. So if we click on cloud mask sun, the cloud will a little bit diminish the amount of sunlight reaching the solar the, uh, the, our air surface. So you can take this value on or you can leave it. Now I want to leave it in this case because I think I like this output now. Now that this has been done, I'll click OK. Beautiful. Now we have a bright model output. The next thing is Miss sky color. What does this mean sky color does? What does it do? That is what I want to show you. Now, this is early morning. Remember, there are days when early morning the cloud will look black, uh, will look very bright with less bluish cloud in the horizon. Now, I want to make this place look bright. I want to make the cloud look white. I want to add a tone of white uh, color to it. So I will check this sky color on. Now, do you see what has just happened to our sky? Our sky is now white, and this is totally wrong. It looks super bright. Now, because it looks super bright, I want to reduce the over brightness of it by clicking at this point, then move this cross value down. What? If I move it down, the cloud turns black. The cloud looks unpleasant. Now, let me move it up gradually. Let me move it up gradually. Follow it as I move it up gradually to add a tone of white background to the cloud to make it appear like what is obtainable in our local environment. The sky is appearing bright with slight tones of blue color in between to make it look real and not artificial. At this value, let me stop at this value. Let me check the value I gave it there. This is 190. So I feel like let me just type 180. You can type 180. Yeah. Also type 180. Yeah. And here 180 as well. And then click on this place. And leave. Now, this is what our cloud looks like. So having done that, you can see we have obtained a bright model output. Remember, we have not even edited these shaders. Yet our model looks like almost needs good to go. So having done that, we are going to see. Remember, Atlantis 5 does not do automatic save. That is why after these settings, you click on your save. It will bring out this dialog box for me. I will choose a folder where I want to save it. Okay, I want to save inside this particular folder. I'll click here and do and create a new folder for it. Let me just give it a name. You see, you see three. I just open this, uh, I just open this, uh, folder. I click my C so that this model is saved inside that folder. Beautiful. Having finished with this editing of our Heliodon, editing of our parameter, the next thing I am moving straight into is editing of shaders. Follow me. Click at this port to bring out my shaders out. I'll click at this, show me your browser. It will bring this model out. I will have to choose which of the shadow I want to set first. First shadow I want to work on is the glass pane here. You click on the glass pane. To do that, click on your shadow here. And then, left click down. Left click down by pressing down your cursor. Pressing down your mouse. That is your left mouse. Press it down on this, uh, uh, surface to highlight this, uh, uh, window, window frame. Now the window frame has just been highlighted. That you can see it is aluminum, but I don't like this material, so I will right click here and delete it and bring in a real aluminum material there. I have to scroll down to start from aluminum. Here is my aluminum. Now I will left click down and drag this aluminum and move it to this uh, window frame and then release it. Now what I have is now a real aluminum, but aluminum comes in different colors. There is this white, um, conventional aluminum that is used in most of our uh, viewings. And there is this dark, there is this dark one. In this case, I want to go for a dark aluminum frame. I'll move this value down to dark. Having moved it down, I will move this shiny to highest value. Then I'll move this reflection down a little bit. I'll move it down. Move it down. Moving it down will give me a dark shiny frame. Beautiful. Once I do that, I'll click on my save as well to save that because Atlantis does not do automatic saving. Now the next thing I do is this glass pane. This glass pane. I want to edit it. I'll start for my glazing freshener. Let's click down on great glazing freshener, drag it and drop on this uh, glass pane and release. Now this is what my glass pane looks like. I will change this refraction to glass. Change it to glass. Having changed it to glass, if you take a look at uh, this, uh, this is here. You see that part of the interior of this building is seen. As you can see, they take it there. So, 
That is, that has to do with transparency. I'm going to reduce the transparency so that one does not see through this glass. Can you see? One is seeing through this glass and you are seeing my stake is hidden inside. I don't want that. So I'll move this, uh, value down. So as to cast dark to make it darker. Now, having done that, yet I can still see part of it. What I have to do next is I'll have to move this, uh, fresh there forward. I'm moving it forward. Moving it forward. Now, you can no longer see the staircase hidden behind, inside the building. It is now bright. The, the glass now looks okay. The next material I work on here is the frame of this baluster. Let's click down on E to highlight the frame. I release. It is stainless steel brush. I don't like this material. I'll right click on it and delete it. And drag my own stainless. Do I have stainless here? Do I have stainless? This is stainless steel. Now, let's click down on this stainless steel and drag it and drop on this uh, frame. I release my mouse. It has just dropped a stainless steel there. I will increase the shyness to 1000. Then increase this reflection. I will take it up. Take it up. Then reduce this uh, figure to black. Beautiful. I have made it look stainless now. The next thing is the glass. The glass material there. Well, I will use this same glazing fresh air, but a different setting is what I'm going to give it there. Drag this, let's click down on this glazing fresh air and drop it on a glass pane to make it a glass material. Then change this refraction to glass. Having changed it to glass, the next thing, the transparency. Move the value of transparency down to have dark too. Are you seeing that? I see what I'm doing. I'm moving it dark, moving it down, I'm moving it down. Then increase the fresh air to make it look uh, reflective. Beautiful. You see what it looks like here? Now, that is done. I'll click on my save. Beautiful. We've done our save. Then, what other thing we have to work on here? This white background. That is not white background. This white thing. Let me move out from this thing. Now, click at this spot. You see at this spot, click at it to bring out the, it is called, um, this spot is called material parameter. I just brought it on. Then, right, let's click down on this uh, white surface. So as to, Select this white surface. Having selected it, we check on the visibility is okay. The shyness is 1000. I will check the color material. It is completely pure white. I think it's okay this way. There is no more setting to do there. Just exit it. The next white material is this one. Can you see this? Do you see the smoothness? I want to increase the smoothness too. I want to move it down to zero. Then the shyness is 1000. The diffuse is... The diffuse, what do we have here? 254. Increase it to 255. 255. Here as well, 255. And here also 255. And tap here. Click OK. So it is pure white. Let, let's check this one again. Let's see if it has the same value. Oh, it's 254. Change it to 255. 255. Here also 255. And this one 255. Then click add this spot to register in pure white. Beautiful. I hope you are enjoying this setting. Imagine your son concentrated behind this building. You know, this area that is hidden behind the building is appearing white and neat. It's very clear. So, having done that, is there any other white area we need to set there? Let's check this one as well. Let's check the settings. It is 255, it's okay. So, we click on our save to save what we've just done. Now, that's it. The next thing we move into now is, uh, the setting, the editing of this, uh, wall stove here. I don't like this wall stove. I want to bring in another material. I want to bring in another material to replace it. I have my user, uh, user media. Look at my user media. Where I saw my external libraries. I'll click on it to open. It is opening. What has it opened? Now, inside this shader pack three, I have shader that I want to use to apply on this surface here. I'll click on it. Shadow pack three has just opened. You see? That's also good. Now, what I want to apply on this wall here is South African bricks. South African bricks. Do I have South Afri African bricks here? Yes. Yes. Here is my South African bricks. Can you see it? SA bricks 2. This is South African bricks. Now, I'll drag it. Let's click down on this shader, drag it, and drop it on this surface. Can I just appear on the surface? Now, click on this dimension. Then, move to this post and click this. Click this on. You see, the South African bricks have spread around the areas that have that particular shadow. Just increase this here. And click OK. Now, this area is for it. What you do is change this position to horizontal. So, as everywhere will look like, we'll assume any South African bricks do. 
Now, now having done that, you look at the scale of the South African back, African bridge, I say, if you are okay with it, I don't think I'm okay with it. Now, you look at this position where you have here, I will slide it upward. Why the South African bridge scale increases? Increase to an appreciable both sides that I feel okay with. Beautiful. I think I'm okay with the size. The next thing I do here is, do I feel okay with this color or do I want to give a little tone of uh, color to this uh, South African bridge? Look at this mix. I'll click on it. Then I want to make it look, um, I want to add a little tone of uh, dark red to it. I'll increase this position. I'll increase this value. I'll move this across a little bit inward. Move it a little bit inward. Beautiful. I love it. Now, what does it look like? It looks, it looks okay. It looks okay. I'll click on my save to save what I have just done now. Beautiful. Now, the next setting I have to do, the next editing is this, uh, top area. Top area. Remember, while you are adding a shader, when you are, while editing shaders, make sure that each shader you have, you, in, you edit, will have to blend with another shader close to it. Like this, uh, South African bridge must have to blend with whatever I am going to apply here. Whatever I will apply here has to blend with it. Now, I don't like this, um, material I have here. I will just right click and delete it. That's just deleted it. That's just deleted it. The next thing I do is I have to change the color of this place. Either I make use of color or I make use of stools. Either color or stools. Then I want to apply stools. I want to apply stools here. Let me start with stool that will blend with this, um, with this particular South African bridge. I think I have to start for, I don't, I don't have such stool in this particular folder. I'll have to start for another folder. There's another folder I have here. Another folder I have here. This is another folder. Archicad library. Let Archicad library open. It is, it is opening. Now this Archicad library has just opened. Let me scroll down and start for the stool that I think can fit in there. Let's scroll, let's scroll, let's scroll and search for stools. I think I have, I have stools there. Beautiful. Now look at this particular stool here. Stool 44B. I think I like it. It can blend. It can fit in in that position. I'll drag, I'll let's click down on it, drag it and drop here. Now having dropped it here, I'll go to my dimension, click on my dimension, click on this, click on this, then Increase the figure. Then click OK. Then change this vertical to horizontal. Now you see, the stone I just applied here blends with this South African bridge. I think I need to increase the scale a little bit. Increase the scale a little bit. Beautiful. The scale is OK. It's OK. It's OK. I'll click on my save to save it. Yeah, beautiful. Now, one more thing is this particular shader, this pillar here, I also delete it because uh, you can see this tool does not blend with this South African bridge and does not blend with this, so I'm going to remove it. I'll click and delete it. That's just deleted it. Then I will have to, I want to use South African bridge on this place. I want to use South African bridge on this place. Now, look at the tool I have here at the base of this pillar. I want to also apply it here. But if I apply this tool here, it will affect this thing. What do I have to do? I have to split because when I let's click down on this, uh, uh, surface. It will highlight both this, this pillar shaft and the base. What I want to do is, I want to split this place by, I will right click, right click. When you right click on it, it will bring out this dialog box. You see this place, split material by mesh. I'll click on it to split. Yes, click on it to split. It has just split, it has just split, it has just separated this shaft from this, uh, pedestal. If you right click down on it, you see, it has a different color. So what I will do is, you, on your keyboard, there is a key. There is a key, alternate key, ALT. Press down on it and let's click down on this your, on this your, on this your shader. Let's click down on your shader and press down on your alternate key. A cross sign will appear to drag this, to drag this shader and drop on this place. You see, I've just dropped it. I will repeat the same thing on this shaft here. Drag it and drop. Then I will also drag this uh, shader here, the base here and drop at this place. The same process. Press down, let's click down on your shader. Then with your other free finger, press down on your alternate key and drag this uh, shader and drop it on this pedestal. 
You see that? Repeat the same process to this other uh, pillar pedestal. Beautiful. I have just set this uh, pillar and then click on my save to see what I have just done. Now, the next setting we have to do here uh, is this wall. This wall. We have to set it. Now, the color, the color of the paint we have to apply, you have to blend with this South African paint. Click on it. Now, look at how you click on this side. Look at where I change it. You see? Just move this upward. I have to give it a beige or an off-white or milk color. I have to give it milk color because milk color blends with this South African paint. They move this cushion up to this spot. What they do in? What do you see? What do you see? Do you see? The color we have here blend with this South African bricks. I think I'm okay with it. I can go with it. I'll click on my save to see what I've just done. What other material do we need to uh, work on here is the roof. I think this roof color is okay. I like this roof, but the color is not okay. The color does not blend with this South African bricks. If I want to blend the color of this roof with this South African bricks, I'll just go to mix color and click at this spot, move this figure upward, watch as I make it look blend with this. You see the tone I've just added to it now. Beautiful. Do you see the color of this roof now blends with this South African bricks? I will increase the scale of this roof by adjusting this forward. Pulling it forward. I think it looks okay. Then the root cover. Root cover also has to blend with this. So I'll go here and also change the, uh, the, the settings to blend with the root cover. Do you see what our model looks like? Very bright. The next thing we work on here is these are um, the the tie on the floor here. The tie on the floor here and the tie on the floor here. Let's let's edit it. Let me choose for let me go for this my shell pack three and select a tie that can fit in there. Let's zoom closer. We're bringing in a tie here. Eh? Now, what tie do I feel like I should apply here? Let me make use of this. Let me make use of this tie. Let me make use of it. Let me make use of it. Now, let's click down on it, drag it, and draw. I've just dropped it. Then, drag this out a little bit. Then, click on my dimension. My dimension will appear. In this case, I won't have to rush and click here first. I want to make use of tie of 60 by 60. So, type in 60 here. Eh? And here we also become 60. Now, do you see this space? This space. Space has to mean the space between one slit of tie and another slit of tie. During laying of tie, when you place one tie and place another tie close to it, the gap between one slit of tie and another slit of tie is this space here. Always give it the figure of one. To appear as one. Then, you don't have to click here first. Click on your 2D view. Your 2D view will appear. For us to position this tie, in the right position. Then you see this spot here. Click, click it on. So as to bring this floor out. It has bring this floor out. Now you see at this spot. Drag this tie and place it at the proper edge. By zooming in, move it at this spot. And zoom out. You see that is how you lay tie. You don't just drop tie randomly. So it means that during laying of this tie, the tie line will have to position this tie. We have to lay the tie side starting from this spot. Having done that, is it this your two easy? Then go back and click here on click here on to spread the tie and click OK. Then change this figure to horizontal. Do you see what it looks like now? This is what it looks like. Then apply a little tone of reflection to this tie. I have to make it a little bit reflective. Observe it. Why increase the value? No way you have a moderate reflection on the surface of the tie. Then you stop. OK, let me go with the figure 25. Now, if you take a look at the tie, you observe that it's reflected. Then click on my save. Beautiful. Then zoom out. Now, having done this, the next place I have to edit the shadow is the floor here. The floor tie here. Let me zoom and drag that spot close to my, to a proper view. I need to have a proper view of it before I apply the shadow to it. 
24. Now, what shell do I apply there? What shell do I apply here? Um, do I have a different floor tie to apply there? I need a different floor tie to apply there. Okay, I have this. I have this material. Let me use it. Let me use this material. This particular material. I'll click on my shader. Drag this tie and drop here. Having dropped it, I'll drag this a little bit down. Then go to my dimension. In this my dimension, the size of the tile is about 1.2 meters. If I change this to a millimeter, this is 1.2 meter. I don't need it. I don't need it. I want a tie of 60 by 60. So type just 600. Remember, 600 is 600 in millimeter is the same thing as 60 uh, cm. Type my 600. Yeah, it becomes 600. The size has also reduced. Change this figure to one. The spacing between the ties as one. Having done that, open my 2D view so as to position that tie to its proper place. You see, during the length of this tie, the tiler will start from this edge. You see this edge. That is where I draw my tie. From there, I start the spreading, and then it's easy to leave you. You see where I position my tie. Then I'll click on this. Click on this. You see the gap between the tie. This one CM, you see here, is this white gap between the length of the tie. That is how to achieve it. If I don't check, if I don't fix a value to this, once you drop this tie, it will not have this check pattern on it. So click my OK. Then change this figure to horizontal. So as this space will appear well. Now I will give this uh, shadow that I have just applied here a little tone of reflection. I think the value 25 will do. If you watch the tile there, it assumes a reflective look. I'll click on my save. Beautiful. Then I have to zoom out. I have to zoom out. Now the question is, are there other things to be edited in this uh, design? Yes, the fence, the colors of the fence. Now, let's click on my shader. Now, I have to change, I have to change the color of this fence. I have to bring it down. I have to choose any color I want. You can make it look like this. You can make it bluish. But any color that I have to apply on the fence has to blend with the paint of this unit. Okay, let me, I can, you can, you can even drag the paint of this unit and apply it on the fence. Let me make use of the paint of this unit. By pressing down my mouse, my left clicking down on this surface, then press down with my three finger on the keyboard, ALT key, so as the plus sign will appear, and then I will drag the paint and rub it on the fence. You see? The fence has just assumed the same color with my viewing. Now, these pillars have to be given color that will blend with what the fence looks like. Now, in this place, I have to tune a little bit. I have to move it a bit. Add a little tone of yellow to it. A little tone of yellow. Beautiful. Then, the car of this fence, I have to change it to pure white. Change it to pure white. To obtain pure white, the value of pure white is 255. 255. Here also 255. And here 255. Then click on this spot. It is now pure white. Then click on my save to save the setting on the fence. Now, the fence has just been edited. What other place do I need to edit? This spot. Okay, I have just done the editing. The black. The black here. I have to move it completely down to tip black. Or if I don't want to have, I don't want it thick black and I want it shiny, I'll click on Atlantis material. Do you see this diffuse pressure? I'll use diffuse pressure and drop it here. Diffuse pressure is, you see, it's reflective. Then I'll reduce this transition. I'll reduce the transition. Down. I think it's okay. And that's that for that list. The next shader I have to edit here is the ground. This ground here. I have to edit it. Go to my alpha, not my alpha, shadow pack 3. What shadow do I make use of here that will blend with uh, the, with my model? Do I have a shadow that can blend with it there? Okay, let me go for something different. Let me go for something different. Go for something different. Okay, let me move, let's go for, let me start with a different folder. Okay, let me go to this shadow pack. Yeah, this shadow pack here. And uh, choose this. I want to make use of this tool. I'll drag it and draw. 
drag it and drop, then change, choose value for it. This stone is four in size, and each size is one. This we have four slates to uh, combine together. One, two, three, four, combine together. And each of the slate of this stone is one point two meter, meaning that a combined four slates will give you two point four by two point four. So what I will type in here is two four zero zero two four zero zero. And also two four zero zero. I don't have to add any spacing here. Why? Because the slate of stone here already have its spacing. So I'll just click on red. Click also here for it to spread it throughout. I'll click on my okay. Beautiful. That's just been set. Now the next thing I do is I can add a little tone of reflection to it. Let me use my twenty-five as well. Can you see the reflection of the floor? It's reflective. Beautiful. Then what next? This grass, this grass vegetation here. I have to add a different grass. To do that, what do I do first? I have to delete this particular grass here because I don't like it. I'll click on delete for it to delete. Then I will search for my inside my own folder a grass that I like. With. Look at this shadow pack. Let me search and see if I have a grass that can fit in there. Let's scroll down. All right, this folder has just opened. Let me scroll down and search for a grass. That can fit in there. Let's search moving down. Moving down. Let's try this grass. Let's try this particular grass here. You see this grass? Natural grass. Let's try it. Let's apply it and see what it looks like. Drag it and drop. Beautiful. That has just been applied all through the area. Let's now, let's now edit the grass. Why I have to zoom closer is for me to have a good view of the grass. Beautiful. Go back to my chair. I want to increase the size of the grass, the scale. Beautiful. Change this to horizontal. Then add a tone of green to it. Move this bar upward. Then add a tone of green. Okay. That done. I click on my save. Beautiful. That has been saved. Click on my shadow. I'll move on my perspective and move out. This is what it looks like. We now have a good grass arranged here. The next thing I have to do is to start bringing objects. I think we are done with editing our shaders. Let's now bring in objects in this uh, model. The object I have to bring in depends on what I want to uh, show in this uh, design. I want to bring in trees. I want to bring in hedges. Now I will have to go to my shader, uh, my library here and search for where I have hedges in this uh, design. So let me search. Let me search. There is no hedge here. Let's keep searching. AL3, AL2. Yeah, I think I have hedges here. Cool. I have these hedges. I want to use this particular hedge called uh, bush. Let me drag it and draw. First, I'll have to click on object, then drag it and draw. This part here. Change this figure to millimeter. Also, here to millimeter. So the height is 1000. I have to reduce it to 750. 750 height. That's the height I want it. But then I have to increase the length by splitting the connection here. I have to change this figure as well to 750. Then open my 2D view so as to position it properly. Look at that. Look at that um, uh, edge here. Then I have to increase the length. Let me increase the length. By dragging this forward, you see the length is increasing. Then I'll drag it, move it close to this point. And then click on my save. Beautiful. I'm done with that. Now the question is, does this 
grass of this Zahi to look real, it doesn't look real. It's simply green. I have to apply a shadow to it to make it look real. Now, one more thing. Remember, this hedge is going to be heavy green rendering. So, I'll have to right click on this. You see, check this with this low legacy on. Once you have to check on green rendering, this system will not take much time to render this here. But if you don't check this uh, object, low legacy, because the, the triangle count of this, uh, uh, this uh, hedge is very much, it's up a million. So, if you don't change it to low legacy, it will take long time for your rendering machine to render this uh, model. Once it renders, of course, you know this shadow has no problem. But once it comes across this hedge, it will take a long time to count the radiosity of all these right, of the triangles of these hedges. Uh, uh, so that is one of the secrets of reducing your rendering time. So I'll have to check it on. Ready to check on. I think on my save. But my challenge now is I don't like the shadow. I don't like the color of this uh, this uh, hedge. What do I do? I have to give it a shadow. I click on my shadow. And start to a shadow that fits in, that fits it very well. Uh, let's go to our shadow pack 2. No, not our shadow pack 2. Uh, we have Atlantis library. Let me search for. Let me search for the folder. Okay. Atlantis library. Akikan library. Let this Akikan library go through. Let me pick a shadow from it. Let me pick a shadow from it. The site session, as I find a shadow that fits there. Now, I have this shrub, the color of this shrub. I want to use this shrub shader and apply it on this edge. I'll drag it and drop it on this edge. That just appeared. Now, look at what I have to do. I click on my dimension. Click at this spot for it to spread the shrub all through this edge. I click on my OK. Then go to this particular change it to horizontal. Beautiful. Beautiful. I now have this uh, edge. Looking more like a real hedge other than a plain red green uh, material. Let me increase the, the scale of the shader. Let's increase it a bit. Click on dimension and also increase it further. Click OK. I'll continue to increase it until it rises to an appreciable size. Beautiful. Now, one more thing. You see at this spot here, click on it, it will bring out this green uh, color of shade of, uh, of this uh, hedge. Move it to black. Then go to this transparency, move it to white. Good. Now go back to this row that you have here. Click on this row, then click on use alpha channel. So what we now have is a full hedge. Now I have to duplicate these hedges. I use it and beautify this building, all the areas that I want to have it. I will now use it to beautify those areas. So let's go. I'll click back on my object, open my 2D view, then duplicate and change this value to 90 so that I can drag it and drop it. Now, watch as I will spread it all through this, uh, all through this particular, uh, Grass bed. I will spread it all through this grass bed. What as I do that? Having finished uh, planting these hedges, right now, right this round this uh, particular uh, grass bed. The next place I would want to plant these hedges uh, along this fence, along this fence lines. You see, along this fence line. So I am going to drag these hedges and drop them one after the other. Using my 2D view, in this my 2D view, watch out. I'll click on my object and drag this particular by, by duplication. I'll drag this, uh, hedge and bring it here. I have to move down and start from down this area. Start from this area. I'll drag and drop. It seems like the length here is too wide. It's covering part of my pillar, my pillar. I'll have to reduce it this way. Okay, I'm reducing it. To fit in into this position. Beautiful. Then I'll duplicate and move forward. Then move forward here. Yeah. Now, to save you time, and you want to do multiple duplication of these uh, hedges, run along these uh, fence line without waste of your time. Look at what you do. Click down 
آیا شیف یا ش... یا شیف کی آیا آتالیت کی آت دی سیم تایم پرس داون آن ایف پرس داون آن یا شیف آیا آتالیت کی سیم آت دی سیم تایم پرس دی تو کی داون پرس دی تو کی داون دن تیک یور کوسر تو دات بلو سپورت پوینت اف اتاتمنت اف دی سوبی موفی تو سی دی لاین دات جوست اپی ایف یو سی دن گو ناون آن پوزیشن دیس بلو لاین پروپلی This is for multiple duplication of object. Multiple duplication of object. That is what I am going to show you now. Now, having done this, check for the key on your uh, your keyboard. There is a key in your uh, in your your number keys. In your number keys, where you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There is a key that has minus, and there is a key that has plus. Check for that key that has plus. Click on the plus. You see, a blue dot has just appeared. A blue dot has just appeared. It's a duplicate of this uh, object. Now, how many of the dots you want to have? You are going to have this eight here. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let's let's count them. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we are going to tap the plus sign up to ten times. Do you see? It is increasing the the hedge, the number of hedges that will be planted is increasing. Finally, we have completed it. You see, each each corner has its own shade. Okay, I think it's not yet complete. Let's add one more. Beautiful, beautiful. Each position has its own its own hedge. Then once that is done, tap on your enter key. Watch, you see the hedges, they all appeared on this line. With this same procedure, you can line the hedges along this other side of the fence. Let's try that. Let's take a duplicate of this hedge, duplicate it, bring it out, change the figure to uh, the rotation to zero, so as to position it in this spot. Having done that, press down on your shift and your alternate key. Press your shift and alternate key on your keyboard. Press both of them down. Then, with your mouth, drag this point to this place. Then, make sure this white dot is positioned in the middle of this space. Then, how many how many positions you have there to uh, to plant a hey, We have one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. So we are going to tap our plus key seven times. So watch out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You see, the blue dots has all appear at the position of the fence. So click your enter for the edges to appear there. They all appear there. Then click on your save. Now we have our edges planted round the fence. That done. If it are too easy, I click on perspective so as to appreciate the work we've done so far. Now, what other material do we bring in? I want to bring in trees. I want to bring in trees. I want to bring in trees. Now, what kind of trees do I have? Depends on the kind of tree you want to plant into inside of your building. Let me go to my shadow pack and start for trees. I have here three pack, add three pack, it's opening. I have different kinds of trees there. The question is choice of trees. Let me go to this Atlantis, uh, to uh, sketch up the Atlantis folder and start with a tree that I feel like I want to make use of it. Okay, look at this tree. Look at this tree. I think, let me plant this tree inside the center of this place. I'll plant it in the center of this place. Look at Now, click on my object, drag this uh, uh, palm and drop it here. It's called Arika Kamisi. I've just dropped it. Then open my two view to position this Arika palm very well. Then the next thing I need to check is the radiosity effect of it. I think I have to bring it to zero. Move it down to zero. Beautiful. Now I have to check the uh, the radiosity position. Okay, it is low radiosity. It's okay, meaning that it's not going to consume more time during rain. I'll plant it there. I also want to plant this particular palm round along this particular spot. So let's let's 
drag a copy of it, duplicate a, a duplicate of it. Let's move it to this place. Drag one. I can line it here using the same process of uh, duplication. By pressing down on my shift and on that key, press both of them down, then move this line to this point. Then tap my plus key. One, two. I just want to have four of them there and then click enter. Beautiful. This is what it looks like. I'll click on my save. Click on my save. Then click OK. What do you see? It's looking beautiful. What other thing? What do I plant here? I think I need to plant palms here. I need to plant palms on this spot. So let me start for a palm. Let me start for palms that can fit in there. The kind of palm that I need there. That can give me the desired effect I want. Let's start. Let me go to this alpha. Go to this alpha. Do I have a palm that I like there? Do I have a palm? Yes, I have this palm. I have this palm. But then, I need to go for something. It's all about choice. It's all about choice. It's all about choice. I like this wax palm. I'll drag it. Click on my object first. Then drag this wax palm and draw. Now, having dropped this wax palm, all I need to do is to check the rivalry. There is... I need to check this low right so that it won't take me time to right click on it. Right click on it, you see, it is now in low right visit. Then open my 2D view and position it well. Position the wax far well. It has to be 90 degree position. 90. It is now well positioned. But then I will position it at, at the position of each flower head. Starting from, move it up to this place. Move it up to this place. You see where I'm dropping it? Get it then I'll use the same process of duplication and move it down to this area. By pressing down on my shift and control key, then drag this blue dot down to this spot. Then how many of this wax palm should I have? I should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11. So I'm going to make it 11. I'm going to be, I'm going to tap my plus key 11 times. So let's start. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then click enter. I've just landed wax farm all through there. I click on my save. I click on my save. That's not on my save. All I need to do is to move my camera out of that position. Move my camera out of that position and then reposition my camera this way. How do you see that? I have my, I have the wax farm given a beautiful look to the environment. I can also position my camera at this point while I still capture the wax farm and also the environment that I've just uh, worked on. So there are other areas I need to plant this particular palm. I need this palm here. I need this palm here. So I'll drag this particular Arika palm, a duplicate of it. I'll move it to this spot here. Then using the same process of multiplication, multiplication of our uh, objects, then drag my cursor, my cursor to this spot. I'll have to position it in the middle here. Good. Then I'll tap on my plus key to duplicate it to the number of places I want. I think I'm okay with this. And then click on my enter to have this particular palm here. Then I have these edges. These edges I need to transfer some of them to this area. So I can do what we call multiple copy. You see? I'll click on duplicate. That's duplicated. Then I'll move them to this spot. Move them to this spot. I'll release. Then start adjusting each of them one after the other over here. Now, having finished the duplication of these uh, uh, edges towards this area, I will also drag copies of these uh, wax farm and arrange there as well. Let me take copies of this. Copies of wax farm. I'll just copy some of them. I click on duplicate and then move it to this. Move them to this spot here. The excess number of it, I have to delete the excess number of it. That is this. Then this one. 
beautiful. Then, then it's gonna slow. Then I'll click on my save. Now, our building is assuming a good facade. I'll click on my save. One more thing we have to add is, if you feel like you are okay with these um, materials and um, you want to render, you go ahead and render, but I'm not okay. I still want to add more libraries, like flower pots. I want to add them in the front of this building to add uh, uh, value to this uh, building. So let me go back here as well and go to my library and search for a pack that has some stuff that I can add there. I think I like this. I like this stuff. Oh, let me let me search for another one. Let me search for another one that uh, that can add beauty to what I want. Now, um, you searching for the library, searching for an object. Okay, I think I like this spiral topiary. Let me grab this object and drop here. Beautiful. Click on my object and increase the size of this object. Let me increase the size. Let me increase the height. Beautiful. Open my 2D view and position it well. My 2D view, I have to drag it to this spot. Beautiful. I think I like it in that position. Let me move for another object that I feel like that will add value to my design. The library, let me search. Search. Um, I like this uh, Pamela plant. I like it, but I think there is one more plant I like. There is a plant I like it. There's a plant. Let me take this uh, 3D bottle up here as well and add to this. Uh, Facade and see what it looks like. Let me drag it and drop. Let me increase the height. Just change this to millimeter. Let me just type uh, 3000. Then I'll move it. I'll move the object. Move the object to this stage. Beautiful. Uh, if that corner, if it looks too pronounced in that corner, I'll drag it. I'll drag it um, out and move it towards this side. Beautiful. Let's see what it looks like. You see the position where I dropped it. Then, let me start for one more object there. Start for one more object. Start for one more object. These are Pamela. Let me add this Pamela. Uh, plant and wrap it on the floor here. It's very large, covering my design. Just like in 3 meters, 3,000. Let me see for it to appear in its normal size. This is where I want to position it in front of this pillar. Then I have to check on the radiosity to be low radiosity. Click it to low radiosity. Then duplicate it because I will have to have it two places. I have it in front of this pillar, in front of this pillar here. So by duplication, duplicate, then move a copy of it here. Beautiful. Then I also check on this to carry. Change it to low radiosity, and also this particular one here, move it to low radiosity. That's that for now. Then click on my save. Beautiful. Now, how do you see the facade of this building now? How do you see the facade of this building now? It's looking beautiful. It's looking loaded and sophisticated. Now there is one more thing I don't like here. This these are uh, floor material here. I have to I have to change it. So I'll click on my shader and delete this floor shader. And start for a floor shader that fits in there. Let me go to my shader pack ray and start for a floor shader that can fit in there. I think uh, I think uh, let me go with this shader here. And drop it then, click on my dimension. Click on this and this, and then click OK. Then change this, this value to horizontal. Then reduce the scale of that place. Click on dimension again, reduce the scale. Then click OK. 
okay then add a tone of make it look ash in color beautiful then make it reflective just type in my 25 yeah i can go with that click on my save so what how do you see our model it looks beautiful do i have cars to add yes i have cars Cars, let me add a car. Let me add a car in my in my folder here. Do I have a beautiful car here? Okay, I think I have all the cars in this alpha folder. Let me search for the car that that will fit in there. I like this car, this Juma, Juma Jeep. But I don't feel like adding it. Okay, let's go down for that. Let's go down for that. Let's go down for that. See if we have the new car we can just add there. I need a Toyota Corolla car. A Toyota Corolla car is what I want to add. Toyota Corolla. Toyota Corolla. I have a Toyota Corolla here. That's what I'm starting for. You know where I have it. Where I left it in this order. Toyota Corolla car. Okay, since I don't have a Toyota Corolla car, I can just add there. Let me just take this Toyota. Okay, look at Toyota Corolla. Look at it there. Toyota Corolla. Drag it and drop here. That's my Toyota Corolla car. Then I have to change the rotation. Let's give it 90. Beautiful. Then open my 3D view and position it well. Then, now this Toyota car looks super reflective. What do I have to do? I have to work on the shader and trim down the reflection of the Toyota car. Let's go to the reflection. The reflection. I have to reduce the reflection. I have to trim down on the reflection. Trim down on the reflection. I think I can go with this. I think it's okay. Like this, I'll click on my save. Then, what other material do I have to plant here? Let me add wall light, wall light, wall light to this um, wall here. Let me drag, let me search for a wall light. Wall lamp. Do I have wall lamp in this folder? I have to search. I have to search for wall lamp. Okay, look at this wall lamp. You see it? Wall lamp. I'm going to plant it there. Now I will drag it first. Drop it on the ground here. I just drop it on the ground. What is the size? The size is 475 mm. I think it's okay. Open my TV view. Open my tool view and position it properly. Now, look at the anchor point, the way it looks like. I'll drag it to this pillar position. What as I drop it on the pillar. Then increase the height. Now change the height to 3000. 300 cm is 3000 millimeter. Click on my enter. Now watch the position where it appears on the wall. You see that? If I feel I don't like the size, and I feel like I want to increase the size of this, uh, I want to increase the size of this uh, lab to make it a little bit bigger. Let me type, change the figure to 600. I think it looks bigger now. It looks bigger. So I have to duplicate it as well and place it in this pillar here. I'll click on my duplicate. Then drag a copy of it. Now I have a copy of it here. Beautiful. Click on my save. There is one more place I need to put this uh, wall lamp. I need to put this wall lamp at this spot. You see this spot. So I will have to take a duplicate of it. Then move it here. Now, is it my tool? If you can you see the wall lamp there. Now, that's all for now. With this, clicking on my save, you see my my building now looks beautiful, presentable. What do I have to do now? I have to go straight for my render. I have to go straight and render it. Now, to do that, I have to do the setting of these. Uh, I have to set my camera, position my camera very well. Now, this is what my camera looks like. Position it and capture a lot of places. I need to capture. A good number of materials. I see. Then open this to the view. Bring this place down. 
uh, take a look at the top of my building. Part of this roof is hidden. I have to take this up a little bit to capture the sky as well. Then let's take a look at it one more time. You see, I have the top of my building captured in this and also the ground as well. Then I will lock the coordinates so that I don't change this by the state. Then change the name of this uh, picture. I will double click on it to highlight it and type the name of the view I want to render. Let me just type in V I slash one. V I slash one. That is V one. And then click enter. So this particular view now is V one. So it is now good to go for rendering. So let's go and render it so that you see what it looks like. Now, before you click on render, you must make sure that this light has gone green. Of course, it is already green here. Then click on my rendering. Remember, there is no further setting to do because all the settings that I need, I have done it. I have done the rendering parameter settings. I have done my video settings. And with what you, what we have here, this view looks very bright. Even though the sun is concentrated at the back behind it, the view, yeah, the front facade of the view looks bright. So we can go on and render it. So we click on rendering. And it brings out this dialog box. Of course, the whole setting has to be done. I'll just click OK for you to render. Watch as the system renders it. It's not going to consume more time because I've reduced the realistic count of those uh, objects that I dropped there. The system is rendering. It's rendering it. Now, the system has finished rendering, and you can see what we produce. If you observe during the rendering, when the rendering machine cuts across this car, it took a little bit of time to render this car. Why? Because I didn't change the radiosity count of this uh, car to low radiosity. But with what we have now, we have a good finished work. Click on close, then minimize it so that we open the picture where we save the visa, the picture where it is saved. Let's start for it. Let's search for it. Let's search for it. Let's start. look at it here. V I one. Let's open the picture. You see how beautiful this picture looks. Now with this, you have learned how to render with your Atlantis Five, and it gives you a neat outlook. You have learned from settings. You have learned the settings of the radiosity. You have learned the settings of the helioton, and you have learned the settings of the rendering parameter. With this, you are good to go in this uh, Atlantis work. I hope you enjoy this program. Thanks for watching.